If you want to produce a great video, you're going to need great sounding audio along with your picture. In this video, we'll show you some insider tips from professional boom operators. Since the advent of the first talking pictures, filmmakers have relied upon mounting a microphone onto a boom pole in order to position the mic overhead of the actors and just out of frame. This gets the microphone closer to the actors than leaving it on top of the camera. It also angles the mic so that ambient noise striking the sides tends to be rejected while actual dialogue is in the pickup zone. Always use a good shock mount to isolate any handling noise from the boom pole. Don't just insert the mic into the center opening of this tic-tac-toe grid. You always want to crisscross or over under the horizontal band so that the mic is securely supported. After inserting the mic, connect the audio cable. If necessary, wrap the cable a half turn or a full turn around the pole so that excess cable slack won't knock against it. Professional boom operators add a small wrap of cloth camera tape where the rear of the mic plugs into the cable connector to avoid any mechanical clicking where the metal parts meet. You should also add a thin strip of camera tape to the tip of your windscreen. This makes it easier for the camera operator to see the location of the mic in the viewfinder, especially when shooting against a dark background. Here's another quick tip. To establish your working frame line with the camera operator, begin with your mic dipped completely in the frame and then gradually raise it until it just clears the viewfinder. That will get you closer to your actors than lowering the boom from way above and asking the camera person to warn you when approaching the frame. When you extend a boom pole, first you want to slide each section out as far as it will go until you feel the stop. Then back it in a couple of inches before you tighten it down. This is important so that each section has a little bit of overlap and gets supported in two places the end of the inner tubing, as well as the locking collar of the outer pole. Only tighten down the pole finger tight. Otherwise, it will take a lot of awkward straining to re-loosen when you need to adjust length. Hold the boom pole completely over your head so the mic dips down ever so slightly. Keep the front arm vertical elbow locked and tucked close to your head. This is the supporting arm. In this position, it's easy to bench press a couple of pounds. If your front arm goes horizontal, then the pole will feel a lot heavier. The rear arm is the steering and control arm. Use it to tilt and swing the pole. You can also move both arms together in order to make the boom pole reach in or back out. Rotate the pole with your fingertips in order to aim or cue the mic from actor to actor. As much as possible, aim the mic towards the actor's nose. You want to come in at a slight angle, somewhere between 45 and 90 degrees. If there are two or more actors in a scene, then you may need to move your pole so that you can alternate from actor to actor, or at least find one position that allows you to cover both of them equally well. It really helps if the boom operator can hear the soundtrack on headphones. There are special duplex cables for this purpose, but you could do it with a simple Y splitter and a headphone extension cable. Higher quality condenser shotgun mics, such as the BP4073, offer a very smooth transition between their on-axis response and their off-axis side response. Referred to as being flat off-axis, it means that audio from the off angle will still sound good, just at a lower volume. Sound mixers and their boom operators often take advantage of this if they have to balance two actors who speak at different volumes. By placing the louder actor slightly off axis, it brings his volume down compared to the actor who remains centered under the mic. The background sound in the scene, what we call room tone, remains constant because we do not have to alternately raise or lower our recording volume. Holding up a boom pole can get tiring after a while. Here are some tips to make it easier. Extend your boom pole to almost its maximum length, and then move your grip closer to the center so the pole is better balanced and not so front heavy. Now you're only bench pressing a couple of pounds instead of finding leverage and torque that would work your muscles. If you have to boom a really long scene, grab an unused stand and use it as a support. Here's the secret. Don't use the stand to directly rest the boom pole. Use it to rest your elbow and to take the strain off your supporting arm. You can use a small pillow or sandbag as a pad. That way, the pole is still gently held and controlled by the fingers, and moving the boom pole on and off the stand will not produce an audible clunk. With these simple tricks, you can boom like a pro. In the video studio or on location, Audio Technica has you covered.